Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, uh, I've got the uh, Autel Evo Nano Plus with me today and I'm out at Kleiner Park in Meridian. Uh, I just got this guy back from Autel's warranty repair in Bothell, Washington yesterday. Uh, they did some, fix some things on it. The downward sensors were acting up. Uh, they put some new uh, uh, isolators on the uh, gimbal here. And uh, I had a great flight with that, uh, and I've already posted that on my channel. I don't know when I'm going to post this one. You may not see this uh, video till the middle of winter. It is uh, November 22nd today. Uh, so anyway, it's, it's kind of a partly cloudy day, or mostly cloudy day, I would guess. So the lighting isn't that great. Uh, but I got, a, I got a fully charged battery, so you know, you got to fly, right? And you guys have seen, I've shown you Kleiner Park many times, so you're really not going to see anything new in this video. But I still want to mess around with this drone and, uh, and check out the repairs that they did to it. And uh, we may go into some of the intelligent flight modes and try some different things with it. So uh, anyway, let's quit messing around. Let's get this bird in the air. Hey, okay, so we've got the uh, fly up opened up and it's saying it's safe to fly. We'll take a really quick look at the safety menu here. Uh, yeah, return to home altitude, 36 meters is okay. Not asking for any kind of calibration, so look at the battery real quick. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, that doesn't really, it's not really telling us much, but it's interesting where you can set that critically low battery warning. And I ran into that yesterday, so I'm going to move that down a little bit. I like that right about, uh, I think that ought to be more like about 10% and critically low, uh, yeah, we'll leave that at, uh, at 20. But uh, I ran into that uh, yesterday that it was trying to land and I thought it was too soon. So uh, yeah, and I'm also seeing that, yeah, battery protection is on, so the battery will self just discharge within three days, which is a good thing too. So enough of that. Uh, let's, uh, let's get this guy in the air and then we'll look at some other things. And I see I forgot to put my gimbal sticks on, so we'll do that real quick. Okay, let's do uh, let's do an automated takeoff on the app. Touching that right now. I always forget you got to slide it. And there's that little drone. We have takeoff, and uh, let's uh, let's turn it around and bring it in to us here. See if we can take a look. Uh, and, and the obstacle avoidance, as you can see, is, is working as it should. And I'm sure it's, yeah, it sees us right here and is not going to let us get uh, any closer than this. So uh, let's, uh, let's go into the camera menu real quick. Let's get that going. Let's turn on HDR. My friend Ross Langdon uh, was telling me that I should have HDR on and that I will get better results. And I would say, Especially on a day like today, where uh, the you know the colors or the the lighting is kind of flat, that uh, makes a lot of sense. So, 30 frames, 4K, we're there, and we are in full auto. So, uh, let's see, we've got we've got a tree behind us. So I'm not I don't necessarily want to try that obstacle avoidance out uh, that quickly, but. Uh, Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and do a, uh, a manual droney right now. So reverse and up now. Reverse and up. And we went right by that little tree. We dropped the camera down a little bit. And we're looking into the sun. I want to kind of warn you of that. So. Probably not the best, uh, not the best, uh, didn't give the camera the best chance here for this droney, but uh, that's the direction we were going, so that's what we did. Let's uh, move around here. And boy, I'll tell you what, it is cold today. When, as soon as that sun gets obscured, it gets really cold here. Uh, and I, I almost need my, uh, my, my flying gloves that have the uh, fingers that you can open up because it is freaking cold. Let's, uh, let's start out by seeing if we can do a rotation around this uh, sculpture and we're in standard mode. Good way to get warmed up and get used to the controls of the drone is you know doing these kind of maneuvers. 
And you see a guy right there, he's walking through the labyrinth that they call that. So you see a lot of people do that, walking that labyrinth. And I'm struggling a little bit to keep that sculpture in center of frame, but we're getting it done. Little drone is, is running like it should. What I didn't do was start recording. Let's start recording now. Okay. Yeah, there you go. One of the things this drone does do is it remembers to uh, stop recording, but uh, we, set, we set the video settings, but we didn't start recording. So this should look a little better now. So you saw that drony uh, just uh, on the screen recording. All right, so it is, again, it's an icy cold day. Let's pick up that uh, camera a little bit and let's head out towards the ponds here and we can kind of take a look. There's a ton of waterfowl. I just, I just did about a three mile walk uh, around the park here and uh, got to look around a little bit and there is plenty of waterfowl out and about. So you're going to see the ponds are partially iced over. It's kind of cool to see the ducks and geese walking on top of the water till they get to a break in the ice and then they'll, uh, then they'll start uh, 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 walking, uh, you know, they'll start swimming and well you can see that right here uh, around the, uh, right around the uh, fountain there. Let's see if we can get down a little bit. We don't want to scare these guys up and scare them into flying into the drone, but uh, we can kind of get a look at them here. Do a little bit of a rotation around. Ducks and geese all together. And there'll be a point that this pond is completely frozen in or over when we get the really cold snap in the, you know, the last couple weeks of December and first couple weeks of January. It gets cold enough to just freeze this stuff right over. But the waterfowl, I guess, I mean, you see them here, especially in the winter, year-round. And, and uh, then in the spring, they, they even nest here and they have their chicks and, you know, they all come over here. You see a lot of uh, chicks, I said, I mean, it would be goslings and ducklings, I guess. This is the little pond and you'll see the, kind of the same thing here. Let's see if we can kind of come down over the top here. Hopefully these guys won't fly up into us here, but we'll kind of get down and kind of get a little bit closer to the action if we can. Let's see if we can kind of move around here. Look, you see those guys right on the edge of the ice there. I guess ducks and geese, they love this kind of weather. And look at this, you're looking at the Boise front there. You can see the snow on the mountains that time of year. Okay, so one of the things that I uh, messed about with a little bit yesterday, and I want to try it again today, is uh, the uh, ludicrous modes. Let's grab some more altitude. Let's get up there a ways. And uh, another thing that, you know, I was going into the menu yesterday to change speed. Uh, Ross mentioned that to me too. If I just click on standard there at the top and I'd forgotten about that. And uh, yeah, so that's putting me into ludicrous mode. And I already have it set in speed priority. So we should get up to the advertised uh, 15 meters per second. Let's go full stick forward right now. And let's see how fast this guy will get up to here. There's 14 that fast. Yeah, we're going to get to that 15. Look at that. 14. Yeah, there's 15 meters per second. Very briefly. 14.9. Close enough. Very briefly I saw it hit 15. Looks like they're putting in some new trees there. We won't bug those guys. 15.1 now as I was turning there. Here are the infamous pickleball courts that uh, I told you about that they're that they're uh, that they just recently completed, and looks like we got some hardy individuals playing the game out there right now. Let's do a uh, let's see if we can do a quick rotation around that. And again, I'm still in ludicrous mode, so let's see if we can do this. Uh, see if we can do a fast rotation. And yeah, we are. Yeah, kind of proud of myself there getting that done. 
And they've been, uh, they have been raking up leaves like crazy here in the park. It's been, uh, it's been kind of, uh, you know, all these trees are, I mean, there's still a fair amount of leaves, but boy, there's been a lot of them on the ground and they've really been uh, working to, uh, to get them all up. So one of the nice things about days like today when there's not so many in the people in the park, we can take a little different route and not have to worry about uh, flying over people. You know, there's nobody on this road, so. so we're good to go. We can take this route back the other way. Drones flying great, great FPV feed on this little guy. And we're down to 63% battery. Looks like, yeah, there's one of the mowers right there. Well, that's actually one of those little vacuum things. And I think it must, it must chop up the leaves, too, because, uh, man, that thing, I've watched him in action. That thing sucks him right up. Okay, let's come back to us. I got a couple of things in mind here. We'll go kind of go over the, uh, right next to the senior center here. And we'll miss that guy that's walking on the sidewalk right there. And back to us. I'm gonna try something uh, here. We're gonna put this guy into smooth mode, which is the lowest speed. I am full stick forward now at about, what, about almost five meters per second. Let's drop this camera down. Let's get it right over the top of the sculpture. And one of my favorite moves is to go uh, go straight up. So let's let's lower down and see if we can get closer to the top of it and move it over just a tad. Yeah, that's about as close as we're getting we're going to get. And I'm looking at the drone here, so have no fear. I'm not. Uh, it looks like we're really close. I am staring right at the drone. We are not as close as, as it looks on FPV here. Let's get right over the middle. And uh, I'm gonna do a rotate and up. So I'm moving the left stick up and uh, to the upper left. And we'll rotate around and we'll raise an altitude at the same time. And as you go, you can kind of speed it up and I, 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 what I did there, the mistake I made there was that I was spinning too fast. I had it over too far. But then you can do a reveal, pick the camera up as you go, and you can look at the, uh, at the territory around you. Boom, and this is the, uh, the gardens by the park here, kind of a public garden. And that's the neighborhood right next door. And off in the distance, there's the Boise front. Let's move it this way. And we're looking right at Bogus Basin uh, Ski Resort there. Okay, let's, uh, let's bring it back. And uh, how high are we? Yeah, we're up there a ways. Let's, uh, let's back the drone up. Let's go back into normal mode. Clicking at the top left. There we go, standard mode. Backing it up and bringing that drone down. That wasn't the best. Uh, that wasn't the best maneuver I've done there. But it's cold. My fingers are cold, so I'm going to make some excuses. Let's uh, let's go into the menu and uh, and see what we can see uh, uh, with uh, with some of the uh, automated flight modes. We still have 46% battery here, and I am. Even, uh, I'm ashamed to tell you, I'm trying to remember exactly how I do that with this drone. And, and it's, it's, it's not coming down real fast. 55 meters. Boom. Let's bring it forward just a little bit here. There we go. Okay, let's go into the menu here. Yeah, no, it's not going to be in there. What the heck am I missing here?
Do I need to stop recording? Okay, we're going to stop recording. There we go. There's that menu. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't remember. I'm sorry to say there's hyperlapse. No, we don't want to shoot a hyperlapse or a portrait. Quick shots is what I want. No, I don't want I don't want to do that. Sorry guy. And I don't I don't know why I'm stuck here, guys. I don't know what I did there. Uh, yeah, so quick shots, there we go. And uh, I'm sorry that I, what I forgot is that you that you have to uh, quit uh, quit recording to do that. So I'm gonna so we've got it on. Which quick shot have we got it on here? I got arrows, so I think it's uh, yeah. There we go. So we got a we got a flick. So heck, what the heck? Let's let's try a flick. What do you think? Flick, and let's click go, and it's going to go clockwise. Oh, you got to select. Man, I'm telling you, I don't fly this drone enough, do I? So I I put our point of interest on the sculpture. We're going to click go, and it's counting down. And let's see what it does here. Calculating distance to target. And it's shooting. And uh, I'm hoping that it's shooting in, uh, in 4K here. I believe that it is. Yeah, that's kind of a cool shot, isn't it? Yeah. So I would say you want your obstacle avoidance on in a situation like that. And it's still going. It's still backing up. Yeah, okay, shooting complete. Uh, I was a little worried about those trees there. <laughs> uh, but it did okay. We were above them. <laughs> uh, I was hoping it would be high enough. 32% battery, so I don't know. Maybe we got time for one more. And I like how it returns to its, uh, to its home point here. So let's, uh, the, the, a fade away is a, uh, is a droney, and we've already done that. Let's, uh, let's see if we can do a, uh, let's click on that again. Let's do a rocket. And uh, altitude is at 30 meters. Uh, let's go up a little, let's go up a little higher than that. That, that. that menu doesn't stay on there long enough. Okay, let's click go. And I wonder, it'll probably tell me that I have to, uh, yeah, select a target again. I thought maybe that it might. Okay, so we're going to click go. And it's counting down. <laughs> I apologize for being so clumsy here. Uh, you know, I just, I, it's just been a while since I've done these kind of uh, maneuvers with this particular drone. Yeah, so it's doing a rocket, but uh, evidently the point of interest was not where I thought it was. It put the point of interest kind of behind the sculpture. Uh, so that is not the drone's fault. That is me not uh, setting the point of interest correctly. And we should be about to the end of it here. And it did drop the camera down as it went. Maybe I didn't need 50 meters after all. Yeah, shooting is complete, so it's returning to its starting point. And uh, you can see how it's picking the uh, camera back up here on the, uh, if you look on the left hand side it tells you the angle of the camera uh, on the screen recording. And I think what we need to do now is, uh, is do a, uh, a return to home. So let's, uh, we're going to get out of there as soon as it's done. And we're going to go back into video, shoot. And we're going to start recording. And uh, let's uh, let's just do a a droney from here. And we're going to go back out over the field. And then we'll do a uh, we'll do a return to home. We're at 21% battery. You can see me down there. Okay, we're out over the field here. Yeah, battery's low. We're going to click return to home. And let's see. If it will, uh, let's see if it'll get a, uh, if it'll land on the pad. My friend Ron Brown, he gets, uh, he tends to get precision landings with his Nano Plus. So we'll see. 
There's that landing pad down there. It may get it. Yeah, we. I'm not sure if I want to let it uh, land in this long grass. So we'll see, we may cancel here. Yeah, it's not gonna find the landing pad, so. I canceled and uh, let's let's move it up over the uh, over the landing pad here. Get right over the top of the pad. And I'm in standard mode, so it's a little bit uh, trickier, but there we are, right over the pad. And so I'm going to pull straight down on the left stick, straight down. And it should pick up the camera here. And it's not, it's kind of hovering there, it's not sure. And it didn't really pick up the camera. I can't remember, does this drone not do that? That's me manually picking up the camera. I can't, I thought it would automatically pick up the camera. It does stop recording. We're at 14% battery, 13% now. Let me get everything shut down and we'll do a quick conclusion. Hey, okay folks. Uh, it's getting genuinely cold out here. Uh, the more clouds have rolled in and it's getting colder by the minute. Uh, the, uh, the little uh, Autel Evo Nano Plus performed great. Uh, that, that was really, uh, I, I enjoyed that flight. You know, nothing too spectacular. And I apologize, I stumbled through the menu a few, a few times there, particularly looking for the intelligent flight modes. I, I couldn't remember, that's embarrassing for me, because I but I fly a lot of drones. So sometimes you, these menus can get confusing you're, you know, from when you're going from one drone to the next. That aside, it was a fun flight. We got to try a couple things out. We got to look at the, uh, the ice over at the ponds and some of the waterfowl, etc. cetera. So uh, anyway, I likely won't post this video. This video likely won't go up till, I don't know, sometime in the middle of winter uh, when, when it's time to, you know, you fly when you can, and in the middle of winter when you can't fly, you gotta have some videos to post, and so I'm pretty sure this is gonna be one of them. That's about it. This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Most of all, uh, I appreciate you taking the time to look at this video. The little Autel Evo Nano Plus. I'm having a lot of fun with this guy. See ya.